right, so please join me in welcoming Carmen Vodislav here uh, from Mayo Clinic, who's gonna be talking about an I2B2 plugin success story. So. Hello, uh, my name is Carmen Vodislav. I'm part of the uh, uh, Mayo Clinic's I2B2 um, team, technical team. And uh, um, I will talk about uh, two uh, I2B2 plugins that we developed uh, within the last year. Um, um, the uh, plugins are um, one for importing patients and one for exporting medical data. Um, uh, those we develop based on users' requests, um, frequent requests for uh, plugins that would um, fit different use cases that um, the other plugins and uh, would not um, uh, would not um, fit right and. Um, um, <clears throat> The, plug, the plugins that we uh, customize or we developed um, um, enable will enable I to be two to support more use cases, like I said, including um, uh, non uh, research use cases. Um, I'll start with uh, the I to be two import patients plugin. We know that uh, by default, when uh, users run I2B2 queries, uh, they, um, they run uh, against uh, the entire patient registry. At Mayo, we have over 11 million patients in the, our patient registry and over 4 billion facts. So, and the data is, uh, we refresh daily, so it keeps increasing. We can, we can see uh, that daily, right? And uh, um, uh, there's some of these queries um, result in a very large uh, patient sets. Um, um, the I2B2 patients, uh, the, the import uh, patients plugin, um, uh, allows I2B2 users, researchers, to um, to run um, uh, inclusion, inclusion, e exclusion criteria. So the I2B2 queries against a, a smaller patient set um, that uh, is basically um, um, the, the patient set is formed by a list of patient uh, of uh, medical rec records number. Um, so uh, consider this uh, use case. Um, a researcher um, working on a current study on a study um, is provided provided with a list of uh, um, MRNs of Mayo. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, medical record numbers, a list of patients that might be um, that have been referred to the to the to the to this uh, study, and um, this might be a patient list obtained from providers, uh, from a di disease registry, or or or, or a previous a previous study. Um, uh, what we attempt to do is um, let uh, with this uh, plugin is uh, let uh, the user um, import its own set of patients and run the inclusion exclusion criteria against this limited set of patients. Um, uh, I would mention that um, uh, because. Um, hmm, medical um, record numbers are uh, considered PHI, uh, uh, we do require the user, the researcher to enter the, to have an active IRB that is associated with that researcher 
or um, RPR, which is um, uh, review preparatory to research ID. Um, uh, this is the way I'll, I'll walk through the steps of um, uh, importing a patient set. Um, so the plugin has um, uh, four tabs. The for, first, uh, on in the first step. Uh, the user must provide, provide um, some authorization information. Like I mentioned, an IRB number with which the user is associated with or um, preparatory to research ID. Um, there's also some um, an admin section for just for, for the I2B2 uh, administration staff like um, the I2B2 team as who want to just debug this plugin or test it, right? Um, the, the, so in the first step, um, the user has, the researcher has to um, pass this authorization uh, step. So we want to make sure uh, the researcher is associated with the uh, an act, active IRB. Um, in the second step, um, the uh, user has to provide um, the list of uh, medical um, record numbers, the list of patients. Uh, but before that, he has to enter the uh, patient set name. So this is this will be a. Um, uh, the patient said that can be later retrieved in the, the previous query panel in I2B2. And uh, that can be further used to, um, uh, to be included in the query tool and run queries against. Um, in order to input um, a list of patients, the I2B2 user has two options, either manually enter those MRNs, uh, if um, the, there, there are only you know, up to 20 uh, patients to be uh, imported, or um, upload a, uh, a spreadsheet, um, a, a list of uh, MRNs, um, included in a spreadsheet uh, and that's the case when we um, actually are, are dealing with more than 20 patients okay. um, um, the, this screenshot shows um, uh, the first option where the user can actually enter MRNs and there are some uh, rules like um, you cannot uh, form rules basically you cannot enter other characters and digits and, uh, and dashes things like that um, and um, the other option like I said was to upload the file um, and uh, there is a limit to the number of uh, patients that can be uh, included in that file and that is a uh, a hundred thousand patients. Uh, once the um, list of patients is provided, um, that uh, that list of patients is validated against the uh, um, the patient's registry, right? And um, it is possible that um, some uh, MRNs are found to be invalid, whether that is due to typos or maybe some uh, uh, patients that were merged in the past or some other reasons. Um, if that happens, um, a warning is displayed, with a list of uh, invalid uh, MRNs found, and the user has the option to go ahead and import only the, the valid MRNs or go back and modify the input, provide a different um, uh, spreadsheet or, or enter, correct the um, MRN form. Right? Um, um, after uh, that uh, step is, is that the input is corrected, 
the um, uh, the patient will see the following messages. The number of valid MRNs were imported and uh, a patient set with the name that was provided by the user has been cr created. Um, at that point, um, the patient set can be found uh, in the previous query panel embedded in a query that has the name provided for that patient set actually. Uh, and what goes on behind the scenes is um, we are inserting um, records in the uh, query. Um, there are a number of query associated tables in the I2B2 demo, demo data database, right? Um, in, in inserting a record for a query in the query master, query instance, query. Um, um, result instance and um, and also um, patient set, patient collection set or something like that, right? So um, once that patient patient set has been imported, uh, it can be uh, included in the query panel to filter out. Uh, um, the much larger cohort. So we also um, create, um, created a uh, help tab, plugin help tab, where we give ins instructions to users of how to use this plugin and how to, um, and, and the use case for which it applies. Okay. Um, the second um, plugin is for exporting da data. And I think um, a lot of people are familiar with the export XLS plugin. So our plugin is um, uh, in many ways similar to, to that one, but um, it, it, it does improve and add some new functionality to it. Um, it supports both uh, identified and de-identified patients. And uh, if um, MRNs, uh, if the user uh, uh, chooses to export MRNs, then um, the user should provide, must provide uh, um, the IRB number to which he is uh, authorized. Um, and we also, allow for a non-research use. And in that case, um, the researcher, the user, I2B2 user must uh, acknowledge uh, or sign an attestation. Um, I'll show that in a second. Uh, we do uh, limit the data export to 1 million records um, for various reasons. Performance is, um, maybe the most important one, but we do, and also we don't want to um, encourage our users to use I2B2 as a, uh, you know, for, to uh, retrieve or export um, a lot of data from. Um, the uh, idea or the use case for this plugin is to, um, uh, for the researchers to get some preliminary data and validate um, this cohort. Um, uh, I'll quickly go through the, uh, the steps of these plugins. So uh, similarly with, uh, to the export XLS plugin, uh, the user can drag a patient set and any number of concepts desired from the ontology. Uh, we added a um, data range, date range, sorry, uh, that applies to all concepts. Um, um, and uh, I can show an example here. So a patient said was dragged, three concepts, um we allow also to uh, the dragging of concepts with the modifiers um, and the date range was selected um, 
on the next step, um, the user gets to choose whether to import, uh, to export um, a patient MRNs, and then it must provide, he must provide uh, some authorization information. Um, also, we can select uh, for a list of demographics that we have, uh, have available for the uh, patients and the specific concept related data such as code name, modifier, date, and lab values. Um, and um, this is a screenshot that shows the non-research use attestation. So basically, if the user, uh, I2B2 user um, selects um, to export, to include patient MRNs in the export, um, he must, and doesn't have an IRB number, uh, he must uh, acknowledge that attestation. Um, okay. This is the way the results look like. We first provide a preview of the data, only uh, the top 500, up to 500 records. Uh, a total record count, it, if that count um, surpasses 1 million, then there is no possibility of, of exporting that data. The user is asked to go and modify the uh, um, um, the the input to the concepts and maybe the date range or or the patient set even and uh, in the end if uh, the user decides to to export the 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 whole data the total record count is sh that's shown there uh, he will click on the CVS export and the um, um, a comma a flat file will be downloaded to to the um, local machine of the user, and then uh, the user the users can al analyze the da data in an ex in Excel. They can take a look at that um, without uh, having the need to access the database. Or, um, okay, uh, again we have a help uh, uh, tab to help the users navigate the plugin. And uh, I guess that was all. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.